since I decided that I want to start practicing minimalism, one of the first things that I want to do is to declutter my house. Starting from all the products that in my room, I want to remove all the material clutter and just clear out some space for my home and for myself as well. Decluttering can be overwhelming. I have a family of five. The things that we have accumulated over the years are ridiculous. If you're thinking about decluttering your home, but you're not sure where to start, I want to share with you 35 things that you can start decluttering from your house. This is going to be a long list. So I have categorized them into different areas of the home and I have put the different chapters in the video as well. So feel free to watch through them or jump over to the areas that you're most interested in. The first area I want to talk about is the kitchen and the living room. So this is kind of a tricky area for me in my house because kitchen and living room are usually a shared space with your family members. So different family members may have brought in different materials and different things in the space that accumulate over time. So when decluttering these areas, I try to be gentle and delicate and respectful of the things that others brought in. Of course, we want to clear out the space, but I don't want to just throw away other family members stuff. So keep that in mind when you're decluttering your kitchen and living room. But here are some of the things that you can start decluttering. Expired foods. Open your fridge and check for any expired food, such as expired vegetables that are kind of stuffed behind other food. In my fridge, I found like expired ketchups, mayos, or any sauce that we bought and keep it in the kitchen, but we may have only used one or twice and then it go expired and we didn't actually get to throw them away. So those are the things that are easiest to throw away. The next thing is expired or unused spices. So my husband really liked to cook and he buys all kinds of different spices and sauces for cooking. But I realized that sometimes we buy these little packets of spices. They are open, but somehow they just got pushed away into a corner or like behind other things. And the next time he was cooking, he couldn't find it. We ended up buying extra. When I was decluttering, I noticed that there are like different packets of opened spices. Some of them have expired. We can throw them away for sure, but some of them may not be expired. I try to combine them into one packet or combine them into a little jar or something like that. It just remove all those plastic packets and stuff in the cabinet. The next thing is excess dishes or utensils. We have a family of five. So over time, for some reason, we just started to collect more and more utensils. When my kids were younger, they used a lot of smaller forks or smaller spoons. So we started to get a lot of them. But now that they are older, the tiny spoons and tiny forks are no longer used so regularly. So some of these kids stuff, it's time to remove them from our kitchen. Excess dishes also, there was a while that we really like those glass bowls that we find in Ikea. They are cheap. So like my mother-in-law would buy like 10 of them and put it in the cabinet. We started to accumulate so many dishes and we unconsciously established this habit of using new dishes every time we eat. The more dishes we have, the more we have to clean them and wash them. So if you have the same situation, remove all those excess dishes, donate them to someone who needs them and just keep just enough for your family. The next thing you can declutter is plastic or glass storage containers. We shop at Costco a lot and sometimes when you buy those pasta sauce, they have these huge glass jars and for some reason we just keep collecting them because we thought we we're going to use them to hold other things. They take up so much space in the cabinet. So when I was decluttering the kitchen, I actually had to recycle at least like 10 of them. Another thing that we collected a lot are takeout food containers. There are just tons of them in the house. So I ended up just recycling all of them because we already have like other glass containers that we can use. The next thing that you can declutter are old or unused baking supplies. So there was a while that we kind of like baking. So we have all these baking supplies that we bought and we like to buy them bulk. So they are like huge and takes up a lot of space. 
We ended up just using them for a couple of times and then they were just sitting in the cabinet. So I threw out some of the old like brown sugar, yeast, those kind of stuff. We also have a lot of baking sheets for some reason. I think there was one time we went to a friend's Christmas party and we want this whole set of different size of baking sheets. Like I think out of like the entire box of like seven, we only use maybe one or two of them. The rest of them were just sitting in the basement. We thought we we're gonna use them one day, but we never did. So those kind of stuff can be donated. My philosophy is if the things that you're collecting, you don't get to use them at least every couple of months, or you haven't touched those things for at least a year, then you don't really need them. It's time to let them go. The next thing that you can declutter are old and unused appliances or cooking ware. So when I was going through the things in the kitchen, I found at least three pizza cutters, two garlic press, and then like at least six or seven tongs. I don't know why we just like collecting tongs, but like we don't even eat pizza once a month. We also have like tons of pans that we bought from Costco. Some of them are no longer good. We just let it sit there, never remove them. We kind of feel bad throwing them away. So these duplicate or unused cooking ware or utensils can be donated to someone who need them. The next thing you can declutter are old snacks. Like I said, we like to shop at Costco a lot and we buy these bulk snacks for the kids to go to school. But it turned out that they don't like to eat the same snack over and over and over again. So sometimes after we bought them, after a while, they just don't like it anymore or they just stop eating them. So there are boxes of snacks that are sitting in the pantry that go expired or never touched. So those can be removed from the pantry to free up space. Now I actually realized that we don't actually need to buy bulk snacks from Costco because they don't really like the same snack all the time. The next thing that you can declutter are old kitchen racks. We have at least three or four kitchen racks laying around in the kitchen. Fabrics are kind of difficult to get rid of, so I always kind of hesitate to throw them away. After a while, they just collect bacteria that gets kind of yucky sitting in the kitchen, doesn't look good at all. The next thing that you can declutter are junk drawers or junk bins. So we all have this random item bins or drawers sitting somewhere in your living room or your entryway or your kitchen. Those are just like garbage cans. You throw all your random things in it. If you haven't touched most of the things in that drawer or in that bin, it's probably time to just get rid of them. The next thing you can declutter are old coupons and loyalty cards. Nowadays, a lot of stores take digital loyalty cards and digital coupons. If you have any coupons that you've been collecting from the mail or you have loyalty cards that you are just, it's just sitting around not using, if you're not sure if you can throw them away, you can scan them in your phone so that next time when you go to a store, just show them the phone, the number of the card, or a lot of times nowadays they can search by your phone number too. So you don't really need that actual card anymore. The next area we want to talk about are bedrooms and bathrooms. The first thing you can declutter from these areas are old and unused personal care items. So that includes your shampoos and conditioners, body wash, any old soap, unused skincare products, hair products, makeup products. A lot of these products do have expiration dates, so do check the expiration date to see if they are expired. If there are personal care products that have just been sitting in your shelf or drawers that you haven't touched them, either you don't like them, it doesn't work for you, or somebody gifted it to you and you just feel bad throwing them away, just get rid of them. Recently, I have got rid of at least 60% of all my skincare and makeup products. It was such a relief because there are so many products that I just feel bad throwing them away before but all they do is cluttering my space. You can actually check on the internet to see if there's any beauty product recycle program near you. So when I declutter my personal care product, I found that Walmart Supercenter actually have this beauty recycle program that you can bring all your used personal care product to and you can just put them in that bin. I actually feel a little bit better getting rid of them. The next thing that you can declutter in bedrooms and bathrooms are old towels and beddings. 
So these are some of the things that I used to just hold on to for a very long time. Towels, after a while, they kind of get like thick and raggy and just doesn't feel soft anymore. I do keep some of them for my dogs when she goes to the beach or go to the park that gets dirty. So we do keep a couple of them just putting in the car just in case she gets dirty. But beddings and old towels, they not only take up a lot of space, they collect bacteria, it's not great for the skin. So after a while, it's better to just get rid of them. For these kind of fabric stuff, you can find a local animal shelter to donate to. They can use a lot of these towels and beddings and stuff for shelter animals. The next thing that you can declutter are old and unused clothes from your closet. I have also been decluttering my closet lately. I don't have a big closet, but there are things that I just haven't touched for a very long time, but I just keep them there because just in case I need to wear them or maybe winter time I can wear them. But like this time I just declutter a lot of them because if I haven't touched them for a year, I'm probably not gonna touch them anytime soon. So if you have those items, go ahead and declutter them. The next thing you can declutter from your bedroom and bathroom are old toothbrushes. I used to keep a lot of old toothbrushes, thinking I'm just gonna use it to clean the sink or something like that. But after a while, it's just like way too many of them. So now I just keep maybe one or two of them for cleaning and then the rest of them can be recycled. The next thing that you can declutter are old magazines and mails. So my bedroom is my office. So sometimes when we get mail, we just put it on the desk to try to take care of it, but like didn't throw it away after. Instead of leaving them on the desk or table, find a place to file them away if they are important. And the ones that you're already taken care of, you can go ahead and recycle them. The next thing that you can declutter are access personal care tools. When I was clearing out my drawers in my bathroom, I find like at least five or six clippers and we have a lot of nail files, that kind of stuff. They are small, but they started to accumulate and the drawer becomes like a random junk drawer. For those kind of tools, if you're not actively using them, they are actually collecting bacteria anyways. It's actually better to just get rid of them, clear out the space and keep just the ones that you use regularly. The next area that we want to talk about are kids' rooms. So kids' rooms are also kind of tricky because we don't want to be intrusive in terms of throwing away the things that the kids might think important. But at the same time, you want to remove all the clutters from their room and keep the space clean and tidy. So here are some things that you can declutter with your kids. The first thing is any clothing that they already outgrown or they don't wear anymore. A couple of times a year, I would ask my kids to just go through their closet and pick up the clothes that they don't like anymore or they cannot fit anymore. Now that we are changing season, it's actually a great time to have them do the exercise again. Sometimes they don't want to let go of specific piece of clothing, which is completely okay, but just have them pick out the things that they absolutely do not wear anymore so that it can clear out the space. The next thing that you can declutter are the books that they don't read anymore. It's actually a great activity to go through with the kids together, the books that they have on their bookshelf, pick out the ones that they don't read anymore and donate them. It's actually a great refreshing exercise to find the ones that they actually like and maybe have them reread them. The next thing you can declutter are loose papers. So loose paper is usually the headache that I usually have. My younger daughter just like collecting loose papers. Sometimes there's scribbles on it. Sometimes they write and random notes on it. And she's not great at getting rid of them. So sometimes it's just worth spending the time to go through those loose papers in the room to chat with the kids and see if they still want to keep them. Maybe have a portfolio or a actual storage box to keep the ones that are really good and they really like and then the ones that are actually loose just encourage them to recycle. The next thing you can declutter are toys that they don't like to play anymore. I think kids all go through phases of like they like playing certain things but after a while they don't want to play those anymore and just like sitting in the corner. 
get a container box and just find those toys and put them together and have them go through them it's great to have them actually touch them and go through them and have that thought process of whether they want that or not you don't want to throw away the toys that they might ask for in a later day but it's good to go through with them together the next thing to declutter are old pens and crayons and pencils so these are also very loose items that sometimes they just sit there every year usually summertime i'll have them sit down and bring out all those papers and test them out and see if they are working the ones that are not working anymore definitely get rid of them the next area that we want to talk about are garage and basements so our garage and basements are essentially our storage unit here are some things you can start decluttering the first thing is old tools we have a huge box of tools that we keep in the basement a lot of them have missing pieces there are toolbox that my husband bought on sale one year and we never actually use them these kind of stuff can be donated they take up so much space but we don't really get to use them like once a year the second thing that you can declutter from your basement or garage are moving boxes so we have moved a few times in the past 10 years and every time we move we bought these huge moving boxes and after we unpacked somehow we just leave some of them in the basement thinking next time we move we can just reuse those boxes but those boxes are kind of bulky and take up space and they're just collecting dust in the basement so if you have those somewhere in your garage or basement, go ahead and flatten them and recycle them. In the summertime, we actually did one of those decluttering and we can actually flatten all those boxes and just give them out for free on Facebook. Somebody can make use of them, but just clear them out of your space. The next thing you can declutter are old luggages. We also have tons of old luggages, some of them like over 10 years old. Those are also taking up so much space and collecting dust. So if you have those, just keep a couple of them for occasional travel. You can even use the old luggage to hold the stuff that you're going to donate to the shelter or Salvation Army. The next thing you can declutter are the things that you're just storing in the basement or garage for future use. So that includes any of the kitchen stuff that you never used baking sheets, glasses. We still have a bag of glasses from when we were living in the States, like almost 10 years ago. And we never need to use them and they were just there in the back. The thing is, we always have this vision in mind that maybe eventually we're gonna buy a bigger house and we're gonna use those things. But just because we may be moving into a bigger house eventually doesn't mean we need that many stuff. If you have those things and you haven't touched them for years, chances are you don't need them in the future. The next thing you can declutter are unused plastic bags and reusable shopping bags. I know reusable shopping bags are great, but for some reason we just collect and collect and collect and we ended up having to have other bags to hold all those reusable shopping bags. So it's better to just keep a few that you use regularly and just donate the rest of them. The next thing you can declutter are unused plant pots. Sometimes when we buy plants from the store, we transfer the plant into a different pot and then the original pot will just there in the basement or in the garage thinking we're going to use them to plant other things, but we never do. So they are kind of dusty and take up space and just go ahead and get rid of them because next time when you buy plants, you're going to get more pots. The next area that we want to talk about are digital space. So physical space are a lot easier to see compared to digital space. If you can clear those out, it's great. But nowadays, there are a lot of clutter in our digital space as well. And here are some things that you can start decluttering. Old headphones and charging cables. Nowadays, phones and devices all have quite similar charging cables. Sometimes you can use one type of cable to charge different devices. And a lot of those older cables, they are no longer useful. Headphones are another problem. 
a lot of the headphones when they don't use it just lays around and get all tangled and stuff if you have old headphones and charging cables just go ahead and get rid of them you can find a electronic recycling program near you to just recycle them the second thing you can declutter are old phone cases and screen protectors when we first got our older phone we thought we we're gonna buy extra phone cases to just switch alternate but we never get to use them and then we change our phone and the old phone cases are no longer useful so those phone cases and protectors if they are no longer useful it's safe to just get rid of them the next thing that you can declutter are silicone earbuds so this is something that is just really annoying because they are tiny they comes in this little packet when we get them we thought we're gonna just keep them just in case you lose your earbud cover you have others that you can replace but that rarely happens and we ended up having like 10 packets of earbud covers so those little things can totally be removed from the space and just clear out the next thing that you can declutter are broken computer accessories so that includes any keyboards or mouse that are broken and not useful anymore any usb chargers that may be broken or bluetooth speakers that are no longer useful so these kind of electronic smaller accessories they tend to just lay around after they are broken and sometimes we are not sure where to put them sometimes we feel bad just to throw them away these can actually be recycled in an electronic recycling program so the next thing you can declutter are old devices and computers these are also kind of tricky things to get rid of usually laptops last for about two to three years after that you may need to replace them we have a couple of laptops that are like that just sitting in the house and we are not sure what to do with them sometimes we even forget about a password you couldn't get in either so those kind of old device and computer laptops you can also recycle them in an electronic recycling program the next thing you can declutter are the apps on your phone so nowadays it's very easy to download apps you find a random app or you find a game that you want to play it clutters your desktop on your phone you end up having 200 apps on your phone that most of them you don't really use it not only takes up the storage of your phone it drains your battery sometimes it's worth it to just spend some time looking at your phone to delete those apps that you don't use anymore the next thing that you can declutter are emails i personally are pretty great with my email inbox i don't like a cluttered email inbox i'm pretty good at spending time to removing the ones that i don't need and filing the ones that i need my husband actually have over a thousand emails unread in his email inbox it just give me anxiety every time i look at his email inbox if you don't keep up to date on your email after a while it can get out of control and it takes even more time and more of your energy to go through them in my gmail i actually have a promotional tab and a social tab promotional emails and social emails are usually pretty quick to be removed i can just mass delete them most of the time and then there are other emails that may be more important that i will actually go through and respond or just file them away email is our regular communication tools if you receive regular email it's worth the time to keep it tidy and keep it clean the next thing that you want to declutter are social media contacts i do go on social media quite regularly there are times when you add people as your social media contacts and friends but you don't actually develop a relationship with them especially nowadays on instagram when you follow people you, you don't actually know those people in person so they're not actually your friends um, you just follow their content because you're interested in their content but after a while maybe you have a change of interest or these people are no longer active things like that so sometimes it's worth the time to go through those social media contacts and remove them so these are the 35 things that you can start decluttering today i hope you find this helpful if you like this video don't forget to give me a like and subscribe and i would love to share with you more minimally some tips and decluttering tips and i'll see you in the next video